today on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. With the 25-foot Hydra Sports Project nearing completion, the crew at MCU scrambles to add the finishing touches. I've got Rick on his way up here pretty soon. He's going to want to see his boat finished and done. We just need to button things up and get moving fast. We head to Fiberglass, Florida, home of open water concepts, to design and fabricate a custom-made helm pad. And finally ready for the water, FS Boating Editor Dave East joins owner Rick Weinstein and his two boys on the maiden voyage of his 25-foot Hydra Sports out of South Florida. I was able to see this boat in its prior form. I was able to see it today in its present form. The transformation was unbelievable. All coming up on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Having already undergone all major fiberglass repairs and customization, a brand new paint job, the addition of a new engine bracket, T-top, engine and more, join us as the crew at MCU fabricates a custom dash panel for the 25-foot Hydra Sports project. All right, we're back on Rick's 25 Hydra Sport that we've been doing a complete rebuild on. We're getting ready to the point now that we're rigging the boat and we're getting ready to build all the plastic dash panels. I've got a new guy working in a plastic shop. He's actually been my mechanic for three years now. He kind of wanted to transition over to getting into the plastics fabrication area. I think it's because we're coming into summer and I've got AC inside the shop. We're working on the 25 foot Hydra Sport and uh, we're getting ready to make the dash panel. Doing the plastics versus being a mechanic out there in the yard uh, it's trying at times, it's really fun though. I mean, you get to use your imagination. There's more thought into it, I would say. And mechanics is more second nature for me. Brian was walking me through on how to make my template, and um, he was walking me through, giving me some pointers on how to pull lines and make things look right, appeasing to the eye. You know, you use cardboard to do your template because you don't want to mess up material. If I go up there and cut a piece of material and I make it too small, I just wasted maybe $20, $30 worth of plastic. And before you know it, you know, you're just way over budget. So cardboard is free. Then once we got the cardboard where we want it, we'll go ahead and we'll lay that out on our material and uh, then we'll do a rough cut. And then we'll start trimming down the size using the, the straight edges in the router. And then uh, once that's done, then we'll, we'll draw out on there uh, where our switches are gonna go and any type of gauges and accessories, something like that. So once we, uh, we determine where our glove box switches and everything go. We move to the left side of the dash on the Hydra Sport and uh, we're getting ready to mount our Garmin. Uh, Garmin's really nice. They provide you with a really good template. And uh, generally we go by that, but uh, most of the time we already got our stuff made up so we can put it on, router it out. We always like to dry fit them once we do get the hole because sometimes, you know, like I said, the template when somebody cuts it out might not be perfect. So having that unit go in and out and you know it fits, the holes are drilled and tapped right, and the final fit is good. So you know, you can move forward. This is the good. This is the good part of the build. You know, all the, the guys working in the back with the fiberglass and the paint. It's dirty. It's nasty. It's hard. When we're rigging it, we're laying in all weird spots, and then we get to this spot, and it starts. The boat really starts coming together, and. That's real satisfying, especially for everybody here. We all take a, you know, a lot of pride in what we do, so. All right, so after Dave cut the starboard side of the dash panel out that's gonna house the glove box and all the switches, we're gonna move it over to the laser engraver. So once we've engraved all the names inside for all the individual switches, which is a really nice touch, we're able to label, put like the name of the boat in there. When we're all done, we color it in. It's just a neat custom touch that we do to our work that no one else does. Now that I've got the uh, bracket and engine on this uh, Hydra Sport, I'm ready to move on to the console. So now I'm going to start building my switch panel first. I'm going to install my switches one at a time, and I put protective rubber boots over them to, you know, keep moisture and, you know, the humidity and all that out. It's real critical to do that. If you just have an open switch, bare, you know, moisture is going to get into that switch. But if you put these protective rubber boots on it, that will stop that. 
and I'm going to install the proper size breaker for each item on my switch panel. That's to protect the unit and also to protect the boat itself. You know, if you've got an excessive draw on that one particular thing, it's going to trip the breaker, keeping it from, you know, melting wiring, causing a fire. We use rubber boots on both the switch and the breaker. So it's very critical to having everything protected like that. So once I have all my switches in and all my breakers in, now I'm ready to move on to the wiring. First, I do my power supply to the breakers, and I do one step at a time. I make all my jumpers up first. I use good heat shrink and dielectrical grease on all my connections there. Got them all set up in a pile, ready to go that way, bam, 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 bam. Get that done, get them on the, on the breakers. Now I'm gonna supply power from the breaker to each switch. When I lay out my switch panel, you notice that I'm running everything nice and neat and it's custom to that boat. No two switch panels are going to be the same that I make. It's going to be custom to the boat. When we return, the crew at MCU enters the final stages of rigging on the 25-foot Hydra Sports Project. This segment brought to you by Fiberglass Florida. Premium products, wholesale prices. Fiberglass Florida is a locally owned and operated company with locations in Rockledge and Stewart, Florida. Our knowledgeable staff will help you select from our diverse selection of fiberglass materials by the yard or by the roll. Epoxy, vinyl ester, and polyester resin, as well as high density core materials. All grip paint in unlimited custom colors. Home to Open Water Concepts, a certified Sea Deck fabricator specializing in fully customizable kits to suit your project needs. Fiberglass Florida, premium products, wholesale prices. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as the crew at MCU enters the final stages of rigging on the 25 foot Hydra Sports Project. All right, so I've got Steve up in the 25 Hydra Sport. We're starting to wrap up this rig job now. I've got Rick on his way up here pretty soon. He's gonna wanna see his boat finished and done. We just need to button things up and get moving fast. Okay, we're ready to uh, install the steering on this uh, Yamaha 300. Uh, we are going to an upgraded system for this because it is a 300 horsepower engine, so. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit down and look at the manual, figure out where my spacers are gonna go because they all come with spacers that gotta be in certain spots on the left or right. So once I determine that, I'm gonna get the uh, rod that goes through the tilt tube. Very important, lots of grease on that. Grease that sucker up, get it in, get my spacers on, get my jam nut on, and then I'm gonna start assembling the ram itself to that with the ears. The importance about this is always read the instructions. Always figure out where your spacers are gonna go. You want your engine to turn the same distance both ways. Now that I've got the ram on the engine, I'm gonna move up and I'm gonna start building my console. They had the, the hole cut for the VHF radio, but I had the, the original console was still behind that. My new dash panel did not line up perfectly, so I'm just gonna make it a little bigger. Pretty much everything that goes in through the top, Yamaha, that's all plug and play, you know, the. Uh, Trim tabs, same with them. With the throttle, this is a fly-by-wire engine, so there's no control cables that you have to hook up. It's all fly-by-wire. You just plug everything up and you're ready to go. The wheel that I'm putting on this really makes everything come together on this boat. So I'm gonna install it. I'm gonna grease up the shaft, put the keyway in, torque the nut down to a proper torque, and put this little protective cover over it. Okay, now I'm moving on to install some speakers on this boat. Uh, we do a custom recess speakers here. But the fiberglass shop, they'll actually, they've got a little mold that they make. These speakers are gonna add a nice custom feel to the boat. Now it's time to move on to the uh, taco outriggers that I'm gonna be installing on this uh, 25 foot Hydra Sport. The mounting plates were already fabricated in the T-top from Birdsall. They did a beautiful job with that. So now all I have to do is make access through the canvas for my outriggers to fit into. Cutting the canvas is gonna fray solder, iron, and actually just melt through it and make a nice, perfect circle. Once I get everything cut in, in the canvas, I'm ready to install the uh, base of the outrigger. And I use marine grade silicone around it. Once I got the base mounted and everything, then I'm gonna assemble the handle part. Grease it up, I install it, and then I'm gonna check function of it. I'm going to pull it down and let's see, make sure it goes out. I have no problems with the operation of these uh, outriggers. Uh, we got this uh, one-piece rub rail, which came in. 
and so we're going to be installing it. We start in the middle of the transom in the back. It's important to get the grub rail to really run straight with the lines of the boat and the cap. A lot of these caps ain't cut perfect. We like to keep our rub rails nice and straight, you know, so we got that done. We're working our way down the other side and we figured out that the rub rail that we got is not long enough and it's a one piece rub rail. You can't really blame no one with this, you know. Uh, it's not my fault. I'm just the installer, but uh, whoever ordered it, maybe the uh, head wing nut up there in the front office ordered it, I don't know. So. We're going to figure out who messed up. When we come back, the crew at MCU races to put the finishing touches on the 25-foot Hydra Sports build. This segment brought to you by Bennett Marine, superior by design. 50 years ago, Bennett Marine changed boating forever, inventing the trim tab, getting you on plane faster, improving fuel efficiency and performance, balancing loads. Today, more than 1 million systems later worldwide, boats all sizes. Bennett Innovation, durable and dependable trim tabs and hatch lifters, your only source for both hydraulic and electric systems. Bennett Trim Tabs, superior by design, legendary service. Enjoy the ride. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. With owner Rick Weinstein planning to visit MCU, the crew races to put the finishing touches on the 25-foot Hydra Sports build. All right, so back to our 25 Hydra Sport rub rail issue. We had Steve all flustered that the rub rail wasn't long enough. He put down the wrong length. He's winning out to be the king wing nut on this job. So it's not the end of the world. I'm able to get a hold of some friends of mine over at Taco Marine. They got us a rub rail over right away. So we were able to wrap up the installation. When Steve got that stainless steel insert, wrapping around by the bow of the boat, we got that final installation of those nav lights, and they look awesome. All right, so we've got the legend, and apparently he had a little issue today. He forgot to get off the struggle bus. We went from the rub rail, now we're on the dash panel of the boat again, installing a compass, and the guy forgot to charge his batteries. I mean, really? So this like 30 minute job, just took an hour and a half. And of course, I got a dead battery. Unbelievable. Ugh. It's all in the day's work, you know. Success. So after our battery dilemma, we've got this compass finally on the install. These are one of those parts and components of the boat that's typically overseen and people don't think much of, but it's a very, very vital component, especially if you're gonna cross the ocean and head over to the Bahamas. Rick's gonna be really excited when he sees this on the boat. So as I installed the acrylic windshield on the console for the 25 Hydrosport, I had Dave, who professes to know how to fish, rig the outriggers. I don't know how to fish, but Dave says he does. I don't know, we'll see after he gets these things rigged, and I'll have them checked out by a real fisherman. The Lumatech light that we put in the transom for the underwater, and the above lights that go in the T-top are really neat. This boat on the water at night is gonna look amazing. All right, so as we wrap up this final list on the 25 Hydrosport for Rick before he comes into town, I've got a couple more requests from him. So now he wants to stand at the helm and operate the boat, and be real comfortable. And so I gave a shout out to my good friends over at Fiberglass Florida. They're the local sea deck dealer for the area. They're gonna come over right away. They're gonna measure out this helm pad and the top of the console. They'll be able to bang this out for me right away so this boat's wrapped up when Rick gets here. In order to create a custom piece of sea deck for a boat, first, a special scanner is used to capture a template of the design. Here, the area where the driver will stand is scanned in order to create a cushioned helm station pad. If there are any obstructions, such as the access plate seen here, it is scanned as well. For areas such as center console surfaces, a tripod is used to make it accessible for the scanner. Once again, obstructions such as compasses are scanned. The scans are transferred from the scanning device onto a computer, which are entered into a CAD program. The specialist uses the rough template to create the final shapes, rounding corners and edges for precise and clean cuts. Once all the data has been perfected, the thickness and color combination of sea deck are chosen. Then the chosen material is taped onto one corner of a flats table at a perfect 90 degree angle. Above the table is another machine, which uses multiple tools to bevel and cut the sea deck according to the exact specifications entered into the CAD program. Here the helm station pad is cut precisely to size. With the cutting process complete, the pieces are transported back to the boat. To begin the installation of the material, the sea deck is first checked for fitment. The helm station pad shown here. Once confirmed, the area where it will be applied is cleaned thoroughly with a solvent to ensure a long-lasting bond. 
Once cleaned, the sea deck is laid on to the desired area. Once aligned, Specialist works from one side to the other, slowly peeling back the adhesive covering underneath, making sure to press down on the material firmly, forcing out any unwanted air bubbles under the surface. This process is duplicated for the sea deck that's applied to the center console surface, which will prevent cell phones and other gear from sliding off if placed on top. Once finished, the sea deck pieces are double checked for alignment and the application process is complete. All right, so we had Rick come pick up his 25 Hydrosport today. He rolled up all the way from Miami, brought him in the back, he walked out, saw the boat, I think he was totally blown away. He had no idea that this boat could look the way it does. So I took Rick through all the custom modifications that we did on his 25 Hydrosport. We went from the outside to the inside. I think he was totally blown away with all the neat custom features. He was totally excited that he's got a one-off, one-of-a-kind custom boat. So, I, it's just amazing. I mean, this has, it, I couldn't even dream something like this, you know, and it just validates to me. I've been going to boat shows for the last two, three years looking at boats. And I couldn't decide, do I want to get a new boat? This is a new boat to me. I mean, this is a customized boat. It's exactly pretty much everything that I wanted, everything that I need. I can't express how happy I am and I uh, just can't wait to get on the water. I helped him hook up to his truck. I got him out of here after I collected a check, of course and he's back to Miami, hopefully to take his kids out for a fishing trip and get that boat out on the water. When we return, FS Boating Editor Dave East heads out with Rick Weinstein for the maiden voyage of his fully custom 25-foot Hydra Sports. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Yamaha's next-generation V6 four-strokes are changing the game. Mid-range power was awesome. Fuel the burn. It's unbelievable. Couldn't believe the speed and the fuel economy is pretty impressive. I mean, I couldn't believe the power. It was like a, just, it was more like doing a quarter mile on a drag strip. And them things are like, it's a whole nother game. So I made the switch. Experience the difference for yourself during the Yamaha Discover V6 Offshore Demo Tour. See why we call it the game changer. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us as FS Boating Editor Dave East meets with Rick Weinstein to put his fully custom 25-foot Hydra Sports to the test on the maiden voyage out of South Florida. All right, Rick, you know, I've talked to a lot of people that have been following the show, and they've been really excited about seeing the build hit the water, and they've been following this boat on the show. Not as excited as I've been because I was able to see this boat in its prior form. I was able to see it today in its present form. The transformation was unbelievable. MCU did a great job, but the decision that you made to make that extra step, put the extra effort in, spend a little bit more money. We always know these projects, they run a little bit long uh, as far as time, and they always take more money. But the extra money that you put into it was absolutely worth it, the boat's gorgeous. Thank you very much. I mean, it was, uh, it's something that I've always wanted to be able to do is share uh, family time with my kids out on the water. I didn't grow up with a boat, so when I made the decision to move forward, I wanted to do it right. I couldn't be happier. I mean, this boat ran good, um, I mean, you, you took it out the first time. I never took the boat out when it was in this other condition. So you saw what it was like versus what it's now. I mean, it's just, the transformation has been incredible. Well, when you look at the things that we did today and how the boat performed, this is what you bought this boat for. Yep. Running that inlet, yep. the inlet was rough. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of boat traffic and just the, the actual waves coming in the inlet was rough. We were able to get the nose down. The trim tabs were great. That's where you get the ride of this boat. Stick that deep V into the water and let it do what it's supposed to do. The garment worked out perfect. We were able to find a spot to fish. May not have caught anything, but got the outriggers out, got a good spread of our baits. We staggered our baits. They were pulling well. We were able to see what was on the bottom. The touch uh, screen is really easy. I mean, I, I still got to learn and play with it, like you said. Yeah, but, but the garment is a very intuitive Simple, unit. man. Yeah, simple. I mean, you can read the manual, and it'll, it'll give you some tips. But the best thing is get out there and use it. I love the way he did the switch panel. You know, all these new touch screen things that are out there controlling all your electronics and all your pumps and everything else, your lights. I'd rather have a good old-fashioned switch. He put rubber boots to protect it from the saltwater environment. Everything is easily labeled. You can see what it is. He even put the original Hydrosports logo Yeah, Brian in. gave me a nice little 
little surprise and customize this panel. The shade of this T-top yeah, was amazing. I'm glad you went with the double bow. The double bow adds a lot. It adds some look to the top. It makes it a little bit stronger, and it's better than that flat top. Looks like a business card with four legs. <laughs> um, but it adds a lot of shade. That little bit of lift that yeah. turns down makes a big difference. Yep. I'm glad you got rid of your old seat and had went to this unit that has to. the built-in live well. Yep. It's comfortable, but if you're going to be live bait fishing, as you get out there and you spend more time, you're going to be doing some live bait, and especially that's how a lot of people fish back here. Having the live well up here on top of the deck. Remember the old one? You had the live well yeah, down on the floor. Yeah, going on the floor. And yeah, that's not the best place to put yeah. a live well. Yeah. I know you had to get rid of it because you, you extended your fuel. Yeah, I tank. wanted some more fuel. How much did you end up with your fuel? 100 and 135. 135. Man, you know what? You could fill up here. You can cross to the Bahamas come back and never buy Bohemian fuel. And we plan on doing that. And with this four-stroke engine, you can do that because your, your, your fuel burn right now is half of what it used to be with your old two-stroke. And it was quiet, man. That engine was really Very quiet. quiet. Uh, having the bracket on the back, you're into diving, you know, pulling the water toy or anything like that. We had a lot of room back there. We had uh, all three of us on the back. I mean, it's actually the extension. I had no idea it was going to be. So once we get some tanks, we'll be able to have, you know, a lot, lot more room. And well, then the seat was actually kind of cool, too. We were running out there, the boys were sitting in the back, and, uh, mm -hmm. and then when we were fishing, we took the seat down, it was perfect, man. Pulls it, it out of the way, it's yeah. not there, but the bracket itself helps the performance of the boat, too. Yeah. So, it gives you more room, yep. it gets that noise and the motor off of the transom, doesn't encroach inside the cockpit. Uh, you end up with a good swim platform, the pull-out ladder was really cool. Yeah, that was where cool. where are you going to store a ladder? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's better to store it right inside the bracket. So. That was cool. You look at the overall package and the overall, the way you put the boat together, and let's not forget that kicking stereo that you put in there because it really you know oh what God. there's not times you're going to kick it up like that but it is kind of cool when you pull up to the sandboard and you can blow everybody else's stereo away. i was actually uh i had no idea when brian built those speakers he was telling me he was going to angle them up and he put them in a separate box and i had no idea it would be that clear and that loud i mean it's actually much more strong than i could ever imagine it's uh it's pretty cool but we're running the bimini and we're going to keep it on real loud we're going to have a good time running well, everything we've talked about, you can see. There's a lot of stuff you did on this boat that you can't see. You could have maybe used the old wiring, but then that would have been a problem down the road. You rip it out, you start from scratch, and when you look at the way he did the wiring, the wiring in this boat is not how it came from the factory. It came from the factory, didn't look near this good. Inside, it's just clean and it's neat. Little things like that. Um, when we did the deck, remember we had uh, that aftermarket deck that we yeah. had down here? I mean, we just have total access down to everything. It's just. Well, to be able to get to your pumps means you're going to take care of your pumps. Yep. If they're hard to get to, you're not going to ever look down in that hole. You're not going to maintain them. You're not going to keep them clean. So little things like that doesn't mean a lot now, but down the road it will. You know, I haven't really done a full assessment of the boat. Okay. So you got to take me out a few more times. More we got to do some right? fishing. We got to do some diving. Yeah, I want to spend some more time with this boat, and I was blown away. Thank you. Very, Dave, very you're much. the best, man. Thank you so much for coming out on Maiden Voyage. I really appreciate it. With an initial purchase cost of $7,500, after adding $97,500 in custom modifications at MCU, the cost of Rick's Dream Boat comes to a total of $105,000. Next time on Florida Sportsman Project Dream Boat, the crew at MCU has their hands full, glassing and blending in a custom-made leaning post, installing high-powered underwater lights on a classic Mako, and more. Also, FS Boating editor Dave East meets with Jamie DeSantiago, to discuss the restoration of his classic Hughes Bonefisher, customized at MCU for targeting snook and tarpon.